Hey guys, so there it is, my new toy box. We'll call this one Toy Box 3.0. <laughs> so this one, like I was telling you, it's an eight and a half by 24. So it's wider and longer. I'm gonna show you what we got here. First of all, if you watched the last video, you know, you know there's some things I really like on my trailers. The RV style latch is super nice, but it also has the bar latch for more security when you're just going down the road. But see, with the RV style latch, you can get in and out of the trailer if you're gonna camp out of it or whatever. Now, like I was telling you guys in the last video, I'm looking for something that I can use for dual purpose, primitive camping. Not looking for anything super fancy here, just primitive camping. So I'm trying to set this thing up kind of like I had it before. Yes, we're gonna go a little bit fancy here with the TV, but other than that, just a small shelf that we can um, fold down like in the mornings, for example, when I'm putting my contact lenses in or brushing your teeth or whatever, you got a little mirror here, nice little shelf, paper towel roll, going to wire up, uh, don't know if I'm going to wire up the uh, battery system yet uh, to my solar panels. You know, since I've got a generator now, I don't know, but it's nice to have a spare battery with you. You never know when you're going to have to jump start a vehicle or a machine or maybe help somebody else out at the campsite. So it's nice to have a battery with you. So I'm gonna go ahead and mount my uh, big deep cycle battery in here. And uh, I, mean, I might hook up the solar panels just so I can keep this thing on a float charge um, every once in a while. But anyhow, so I'm just trying to kind of get it organized here. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put some cabinets over here, just some very simple economical cabinets. That way I can have paper plates, forks, spoons, cups, napkins, you know, just the basic stuff you need when you're out camping. Um, and I might try to do some kind of a little shelf down here. Um, when we went camping last time, I actually borrowed a microwave, just an old cheap microwave oven from one of my cousins. And it ended up being really nice because then you can pack frozen food, keep it in your cooler. And when it's time to eat, you can throw frozen, excuse me, throw some frozen food in the microwave and you're ready to go. Um, you know, it's nice cooking hot dogs out over the fire, but sometimes you want to just be able to throw something in the microwave, especially for the kiddos. So I might do like a simple shelf here with the microwave and some cabinets up above. Um, and you know, the possibilities are endless. I'm still trying to think about how I'm going to do this. Uh, now, as far as transporting the machines, this trailer has six tie downs, it's got two D rings back there, two up here in the middle. And then they put two in the floor up here. Um, so I've been doing some measurements because I think what I'm going to do is when I load this thing up, I'm going to put my side by side in the front of it because I want more tongue weight so that the trailer will behave going down the road. So I'm going to load my side by side in first and it should come out like right in this area. And then I'm going to put my son's ATV back here. So I believe what I'm going to do is the tie downs are great. I'm going to put some e-track just back here and um, that way I'll be able to tie down because the way it's going to work out the side by side is going to cover this one up so this d-ring is not going to do me any good I'm going to tie the front of the side by side down with those d-rings these aren't going to do me any good and those are too far back so I'm going to put some e-track right here to strap down the rear of my machine and the front of his machine and then I'll use those D-rings for the rear of his machine, if that makes any sense. But it's gonna be really nice to be able to get two machines in the trailer finally. No more having to play musical chairs with the machines in the trailer, because I used to have to put his ATV in the bed, then hook up the trailer, then load my ATV, or UTV rather. And then when we get to the campsite, I'd have to unload mine, unhook the trailer, go find somewhere to pull up to a little hill so I could unload his ATV, then hook the trailer back up so nobody can steal it, you know, and then reverse process when it's time to go home, real pain. So now we can just put all the machines in here, unload them when we're ready, set up our beds and we'll be good to go. Now, one thing you notice is this trailer does not have windows in it. I've ordered a couple of windows. The dealer wanted too much money for them. They wanted $400 per window. I was able to go on amazon.com and find some windows that have really good reviews for about $105 each. A lot cheaper. So I'm gonna get a couple of windows. I gotta decide where on this wall I'm gonna put one. Uh, my other trailer had a window on the door. 
which I guess is kind of cool, but you don't have to put it in the door. I think I'm going to put one over here on this wall and maybe one on this wall. And I'm going to stagger them. Might put one window like back there and then one window closer to the front on this side and kind of stagger them so there's a good amount of sunlight coming in all over the trailer. Uh, so I'm going to do that. And this one also does not have a roof vent. They put an uh, overhead light in it, but no roof vent. Uh, which is something that normally I like to have. But the dealer said that honestly, they've started to order these without roof vents because they find that over time, the roof vents will give you another place where they can leak. And they just got tired of warranty claims, people coming back complaining about leaks. So now they order them without roof vents. Um, you know, normally I like to have that to let the heat out in the summertime, but this one does have the flow through vents. So when you're going down the road or whatever, the air will flow through. It's got one up there and one down there uh, for ventilation. And like I said, I'm putting windows in here too. So once I get the windows in and, you know, and, and these roof or excuse me, side vents, you know, the combination of the two should give me plenty of ventilation in here. So it'll be okay. And I guess it is nice to know that I don't have, you know, another leak point potentially up there. So it's okay. Um, so all in all, the trailer's pretty much the same. It's just bigger. Uh, this one does have seven foot roof. Obviously it's wider. You can see that the wheel wells end up on the inside of the trailer rather than the outside on the seven footers. And uh, the length is going to be pretty nice. So just got to finish setting it up and um, kind of a, kind of a cheap way to do both, be able to camp in here and haul machines. Now, as far as beds go, I've got a couple of mattresses. I'm trying to figure out um, if I'm going to like build something to mount on the wall and then I can fold it down and lay the mattresses on there, you know, and then when we get ready to go home or whatever, you can just fold it back up and latch it so it's out of the way and you can pull the side by side in. I may try something like that. What we've been doing is just throwing the mattresses on the ground or on the floor rather. So that's, that's fine too. I mean, it's a nice firm floor, nice and level. You know, so we don't really need to elevate the mattresses. Uh, it might just be, you know, good just to keep doing what we've been doing, throw them on the floor there. But uh, anywho, let me uh, let me mention something that somebody asked me about the other day while we're on the topic of trailers. So um, after this uh, last video that I just shot where I went to get the trailer, somebody posted a comment and asked me how this tows compared to the seven foot wide trailer because he said he's looking at trailers and he doesn't know whether to go with a seven foot wide or an eight and a half foot wide. Um, so yes, this one does not tow as well. And let me show you why I think that might be. So obviously this trailer's wider. The height is the same as the one that I had. Um, and the weight is a little more, but not a lot more. It's like 1400 pounds difference. So it's not a huge increase in weight, but I think what's going on is where this trailer is wider. I think these corners down here are catching a lot of wind. So the seven foot wide trailer was narrow enough that the entire structure of the trailer back here was behind the pickup truck, if that makes any sense. So the aerodynamic nature of the truck cuts through the air and then the trailer really doesn't have to. The only part of the trailer that catches any air is up here where it's higher than the truck. But on this eight and a half foot wide, you've got the height, but you've also got more width. And so these corners, these sides here, stick out past the truck on both sides. So now you're catching air all around here when you're going down the road. All that is, is catching the wind. And so I guess the, the difference in arrow is enough that it, it really does not tow as well when it's empty. Now, when you load these things down and put more weight in them, they actually tow a little better. They're more planted and more stable. But just going down the highway with this thing empty, you know, it's, uh, it's catching a lot of wind. It's empty, so it doesn't have a lot of weight to keep it planted. And I will admit that it does not tow as well as the 7x14 that I had. It kind of tended to dance a little bit when I got into... Uh, like a situation where a semi truck passed me and really knocked the air currents around, you know, or uh, if you got, you know, a pretty good wind gust, crosswind hitting the side of the trailer, you know, or something like that. It, it did tend to kind of dance around a little bit and it certainly does not feel as stable as a seven footer. So if you've got a smaller, more lightweight truck, you might want to keep that in mind as well. 
I would recommend probably sticking with the seven foot. You're gonna have to have a fairly substantial truck to tow something like this down the road because uh, you do have a lot, of, uh, a lot of air drag in addition to length. And if you load it down, you know, where this thing can haul a lot more, it's gonna weigh a lot more, you know, after I get it loaded. So, you know, it is something to consider, but, but the answer to the question, no, this does not tow as well. Um, in fact, I'm to the point now where I think that once I get this thing fully loaded, I'm probably going to start wishing that I had a three quarter ton truck. And, uh, it may be something I have to consider in the future. If I'm really going to get into hauling two side by sides and a bunch of camping stuff, I might want to go with a three quarter ton truck, you know, just to make things more comfortable on the tow going down the road and a little safer. Hey buddy, you want to throw Frisbee? All right. So I actually had gone to get a white one, the exact same trailer, same trim and everything, but the main color was white. And when I got down there, they had gotten this one in the same day that I got there. So I decided to go with this one because it won't show dirt as bad. Uh, the white ones tend to get kind of grungy and dirty looking over time. Uh, this one won't show dirt as bad, so it'll be pretty nice. This one has 5,200 pound axles under it, which is also nice. Brakes on both. I'm getting ready to jack it up and check to make sure that they're not dragging. You know, I'm, I'm kind of wondering why it is that my fuel economy was so bad. I mean, I can understand losing a little bit, but to go from 14 with that seven and a half or excuse me, seven foot trailer down to eight or nine with this trailer, that's, that's a huge loss. So I'm just going to jack these up in a minute and spin them just to make sure the brakes aren't dragging or something. But anyhow, there's the flow through vent, LED lights, does have a ramp door, obviously. So it's a pretty nice trailer. Uh, it's got everything that I need. Once I get the windows in there and some cabinets, a couple, more, a couple other things, it'll be pretty awesome for what we're going to use it for. I have noticed that uh, this trailer, it's, uh, it's a little bit harder to see around. You know, my half-ton truck has pretty nice mirrors on it. I have to say, you know, the Ram 1500 has some really, really nice mirrors on it in the, in the trim level that I got, but they're still not enough. You can't, so like I'm going down the road, that's my view. You know, you can't really see what's behind you. You can just kind of see that. I mean, you can see well enough to make lane changes, but you can't tell really where your tires on the trailer are at. You can't look at the tires to, you know, to check them as you're going down the road like you can with the seven foot trailer. So seeing around it is a, is a little bit more of a challenge, but I guess that's something that can be rectified later on. Now, funny thing about it is my, uh, I've, got a, I've got a lock here that I was using with my seven foot trailer and it was fine. This trailer, I don't know if you can see there, but the holes are not, see like, it's just not wide enough. The lock is not wide enough. It needs like another eighth of an inch. Um, so I can't get my bolt down in there. So I'm gonna have to like beat this down a little bit with maybe a hammer or something. Kind of go in there, well, come on camera, focus. Go in there and kind of beat these down a little bit because right now it won't, see it won't, it won't go down over it. So it's funny, the trailer tongue's just a little bit wider. It's just the flange on there. So I'm gonna have to do something about that so I can use my lock, but Anyhow, that's pretty much it. Um, it's going to be nice when we get it done, isn't it, Toby? We can all go camping and have some fun next year. Man, I tell you what, it gets dark way too fast this time of year. But anyhow, I jacked the trailer up and checked the wheels, and they spin freely, no problems with the brakes. You can barely hear them dragging the shoes, which is actually what you want. So everything's completely normal there. Uh, I also got my issue with my lock fixed. I took a big hammer and just kind of beat it real like in this area right here, beat it real hard and uh, made it a little bit narrower so that now my uh, my lock will fit over my tongue. So got that squared away as well. But uh, man, it's getting dark quick out here. I hate this time of year. There's like no daylight after work to get much done. So I think it's time to go in and get some dinner. But I appreciate you guys watching. Um, Going to be seeing more of the trailer and some projects with it as we go along. Um, maybe over the winter after the holidays. You know, you're sitting around doing nothing, kind of get bored. Might come up with some plans for it and start working on it. So it'll be ready to go for the spring. So anyhow, thanks guys. Have a good week. Talk to you later.